Decision making is one of our most important daily activities. Decision, decisions drive vision, strategy, execution, problem solving, performance, evaluation, and continuous improvement. When a crisis occurs, regardless of its economic, health, political, or otherwise implications, the balance of the organization needs to be adjusted and often abruptly. During a crisis, business during a crisis, a business business is not as usual. There is uncertainty, lack of time, and high stakes that can all influence a leader's decision making. In normal environments, you might have weeks, days, or months to plan ahead to make a critical decision, and plenty of time to plan out the what ifs, refine your plans, get buy in from your investors, your staff, your teams, your customers, other key stakeholders. But during a crisis, you must make decisions about the unknown fast. You might have seconds, minutes, or if you're lucky, a few hours. The decisions you make in a crisis can alter the course of your organization's response for better or worse, depending on your speed and calculations. In my earlier class, Crisis Communications, we talked about doing as much planning ahead of time as possible for a crisis. We started to write a formal crisis communication plan for your business so that in the event of a crisis, you already have a good idea of the logistics of your decision making and you can quickly adapt to the situation at hand. So we're gonna look at three types of decision makers and how they need to adapt in order to make decisions in a crisis. And as we look at these three, try and figure out where you lie on the spectrum. You might be in between one or two of them, you might be a combination of all three. So intuitive leaders. Leaders that make decisions based on intuition are often relying on emotional-based decision-making without any planning or background research done. While you can make a right decision based off your intuition, these deci decisions are generally riskier than one that is well thought out. Leaders that can make good intuitive decisions backed up with pre-planning, like we talked about in crisis communications, for any type of crisis response are going to be more successful than those that dive into a crisis without any type of research done and make intuitive decisions. Number two is rationale. Leaders that depend heavily on research-driven decisions are going to have a very hard time navigating crisis. If they are thinking too much, there will be never enough time for them to thoroughly th think through a decision that needs to be made during a crisis. Leaders that rely on their rationale and research to make decisions must learn how to make decisions with supportive research. Political. Those that make decisions on the basis to appease their own team or a specific group's interest make negotiated decisions. This decision, de decision making process is often very laborious because you have to get buy-in from everybody and it often leads to everyone arguing and sticking their feet in the ground, drawing a line and defending their positions on the issue. There is no time for political posturing during a crisis and this political leader needs to adjust to making decisions based on right and wrong versus appeasing the masses. And when I say right and wrong, right or wrong for the business or the team, rather than appealing to everybody and getting everybody on board. During a crisis and making your decisions, you must be unified on an end goal. Making a crisis decision should begin with an end goal. When COVID started, I had clients that owned a restaurant outside of San Francisco in Marin County. And I got a phone call and they said, we just need to stay open. We need to be in business when this is over. During week one, they cared more about getting rid of the perishable food in the fridge than the profit margins. Week two, we started looking at ways to appeal to a local audience 
since our existing audience of tourists was no longer traveling and looking for sustainable ways for the business to be profitable throughout a long-term crisis. Establishing an overall goal will help to keep the decision makers and the organization on the right path forward, especially if you will have multiple persons making independent decisions based on their own responsibilities in their work areas and departments. Number two, make decisions with grace, generosity, and spirit. Decisions that support the end goal should be made with others in mind. Their health, their safety, their well-being, ongoing training and humility, cultural humility, cognitive biases, emergency readiness, and performance improvement when the organization is not in crisis can greatly support decision making. Staying in your own lane. If we are truly to empower others to make decisions during a crisis that affect their own areas of the business operation, everyone else needs to stay in their own lanes. Individual decision makers need a safety net, so to speak, so that they are able to make decisions that support the end goal without interference of the others. And they need to be trusted by business owners and leaders of the organization that they are able to make decisions for their respective areas. Number four, you have to make decisions without ego, without blame. You have to embrace action and don't punish for mistakes. Your team should feel safe if they are making crisis decisions that contradict with ideas and expertise that might seem like the right path in normal circumstances. In crisis situations, there is no thing as a stupid question or a dumb idea. All the cards need to be on the table and considered. There needs to be collective agreement that blame will not be assigned if crisis decision is made that doesn't work out as expected and instead agree to collectively adapt and pivot again if needed. If you are in a situation like COVID or a natural disaster that is affecting businesses locally, regionally, nationally, not just yours, keep in mind that you don't have to be first. This is not a race. If businesses are starting to operate or reopen it as normal or adjust to regulations, you don't have to jump in the pool right away. It is okay to have a measured response. Let others go first and make mistakes that you can learn from. Reading 2.1 will cover how to fa make faster decisions in your team meetings and also how to make tough decisions in a crisis. Activity 2.1 will define your priorities for decision making. And then I will see you back here for video 2.2, adapting and prioritizing.